Hi, my name is Terry Brown from the Faculty of Engineering and IT at the University of Technology, Sydney. Welcome to another video um, engineering mechanics example problem. This problem is a typical engineering mechanics um, rigid body equilibrium problem that you'll see in many uh, engineering mechanics statics textbooks. Uh, so we'll work through it slowly and see how um, the solution proceeds. Okay, so first let's consider the problem. So we've got a beam here supported at NB here by a pin support and at end A by a rocker support, um, which is similar to a roller support in that it um, constrains vertical motion, but it allows some slight movement in the horizontal direction. So in this problem, we said, uh, we're told that we can neglect the weight of the beam in the calculations and we want to determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reactions for the loaded beam. Okay, so the forces provided by these supports or constraints to the beam. Okay, so let's consider our approach to solving this problem. Um, so whenever we do an engineering mechanics problem, the first thing we do is to draw the free body diagram. Okay, so that's to represent the body that we're analysing um, removed from anything it's attached to. So the things that we'll need to remove uh, are the supports at ends B and at end A here and replace those supports by the forces and or moments that they um, provide to the beam in order to balance these applied loads. Then once we've done that, uh, we will apply the equations of equilibrium and then solve the equations of equilibrium for our unknown reaction forces and or moments. Okay, so let's start by drawing the free body diagram. So our free body diagram to start with is just a simple representation of the external shape of the body that we're analysing. So in this case, it's just a simple long rectangle. I've also included on here uh, the relevant dimensions that we'll need. And then once we've done that, we can start adding in our forces or our loads um, that are acting on the beam. So in this problem, we'll start from NB and start working our way across. So we've got the 200 Newton force acting downwards at point B and a 100 Newton force acting uh, two metres from NB. And there's also a couple moment applied there of 200 newton meters and we've got the force two meters from end a which is at 600 newtons at 45 degrees and we also take note here that um, we've given uh, we've been given the distance between where that load is applied and uh, the center line of the beam so we've included that dimension in our free body diagram because that'll be important for when we're calculating moments Okay, so now that we have all our loads indicated on our free body diagram, we can start thinking about the reaction forces. So at end B here, uh, we have a pin support. So a rotation is allowed, so there's going to be no moment reaction, um, but the beam is constrained from moving horizontally and also constrained from moving vertically. So we're going to have a vertical reaction force and a horizontal reaction force at point B and we label them with appropriate um, variable names so we'll have R subscript B subscript X for the re reaction force at B in the X direction and similarly for the vertical reaction force R for the force B for where it's acting and Y for the direction. Then at end A uh, we have a rocker support so it prevents um, translation in the vertical direction but allows some movement in the horizontal direction. So we'll have here just a single vertical reaction RAY. Okay, so now that we have our free body diagram and our uh, unknowns identified and labelled, we can start to write out the equations of equilibrium to solve for those unknown reaction forces. Okay, so uh, we've got three equations of equilibrium, some of the moments and uh, the two force component equations. 
which one do we start with first? Well, usually we start with a moment equation um, because that enables us to usually take out one or more of our unknown reaction forces so that we end up with just one equation and one unknown so that we can solve for that one unknown straight away. So in this problem, we could take moments about point A uh, as that would take out um, the effect of RAY as moment of RAY about point A would be zero. But we also notice that RBX also passes through point A, so that also will have a zero moment about point A. Okay, so in this case we could take moments about A or B, um, and in either case we'd only have one unknown in the equation. So if we take moments about point A, the only unknown will be RBY, and if we take moments about B, the only unknown will be RAY. Okay, so in this problem I'm going to use moments about A and okay again uh, it's important that we indicate in our writing of the equation of equilibrium where we're taking moments about so here I've said some of the moments about point A and I also indicate that anti-clockwise is positive okay so we're just going to uh, work our way from left to right along the beam taking into account or calculating the moment effect of each of the loads uh, along the beam as we move along. Okay, so starting at point A, uh, as we've discussed, ROY has a zero moment about point A because it passes through point A. Then we next need to deal with this 600 Newton force at 45 degrees. Okay, so um, in my opinion, the easiest way to deal with this is to find the horizontal and vertical components. So let's go ahead and do that. So they'll be acting there like that. And from trigonometry, we know that the vertical component here will be 600 sine 45. Right, we're given this angle here, 45. And this horizontal, com horizontal component here uh, will be 600 cos 45. Okay. Let's start with the 600, um, the vertical component of the 600 Newton force. So its moment effect will be 600 sine 45 times distance, perpendicular distance to point A, which is 2. So we'll have 600 sine 45 times 2, and that's going to be rotating right, around clockwise. So that's a negative moment according to our positive, um, positive convention. Before we go on to um, continue calculating the moments, I just want to point out that I see a lot of people put the component of the force here, right, or up here like this, right, draw the, draw the components like that. Uh, if you do that, um, it, it, in my opinion, that's not good practice because what it indicates is that when you're calculating the moment of this component here, right, it looks like that the distance uh, between that component and point A is something less than 2, okay? Uh, but the moment effect of this component is actually right, the component acting out here times 2, right? So try to avoid drawing your components like that. Instead, draw them so that they maintain their correct line of action. Okay, so next we'll deal with the horizontal component. Uh, so again, that's going to cause a clockwise rotation about point A, because right, this force is up here. Right, it's going to cause clockwise rotation about point A. So we have 600 cos 45 times this distance, which is 0.2. All right, then moving along the beam to our 100 Newton force. Again, that's going to generate a clockwise rotation or tend to produce a clockwise rotation of the beam about point A. So, um, and its distance from point A is 5, so its moment effect is minus 100 times 5. Okay, then we have the uh, 200 Newton meter applied couple moment, so we can just add that in. So plus 200 Newton metres. Now be careful here, uh, in this case our dimensions are in metres and our 
forces are in newtons. So sometimes um, you'll have newtons and millimetres as your dimensions. And if you've got a moment specified in newton metres, then you'll of course need to do the appropriate unit conversion um, to convert either your dimensions here into into meters, uh, millimetres or convert your moment uh, into newton millimetres. Right, then moving along uh, to the end, we've got our 200 newton applied force here, acting at a distance of 7 metres, okay, so the total length of the beam, and again that's causing a clockwise rotation of the beam about point A, so a negative moment, and then lastly we have our reaction force RBY also acting at 7 metres but causing an anti-clockwise rotation about point A uh, so that's a positive moment and all of that is equal to zero okay so that gives us one equation one unknown in RBY so we can rearrange that do the maths to calculate for RBY to get 376.2 newtons Okay, so now we can use our other equations of equilibrium. So firstly, we'll do some of the forces in the vertical direction with positive being upwards, all equal to zero. So again, um, just start by working our way along from left to right. So we have RAY positive minus 600 sine 45 minus 100 minus 200 plus RBY, all equal to zero. So we've just uh, calculated RAY um, up here. So we have again just one equation, one unknown. We can solve for RB, sorry RAY. Okay, sorry, I think I just said that wrong. So up here we had RBY that we'd calculated previously. In this equation, um, RAY is our unknown. So we can substitute that. RBY into here and calculate RAY. Okay, so then we can apply our other equation of equilibrium, some of the forces in the horizontal direction equal zero, with uh, to the right being positive. And again, we'll just work from uh, left to right. So we start off with the horizontal component of our 600 Newton force here, so 600 cos 45, and the only other horizontal force that we have is RBX. So we can solve from that equation to get RBX equals minus 424.3 newtons. Okay, so now I'll just write out our final answers at the end. So RAY, and round up to three significant figures. So RAY was 348 newtons. RBX is minus 424, according to what we've put in our um, free body diagram. So where we had RBX acting to the right, the negative sign indicates that it actually acts to the left, uh, which is obvious when you look at the only other horizontally applied force. So that's acting to the right. So for this to be in equilibrium, then RBX obviously has to act to the left. And uh, RBY is 376 newtons. Okay, when we get our, to the end, we should go back and check our calculations. Uh, one good way of um, checking your, your calculations is to take moments about another point. So we could take moments about point B and solve for RAY that way and then compare that with uh, what we've got here and we should get the same answer. So I'll leave you to do that uh, and for those of you that were in the lecture um, that's the way we did it in the lecture so you can compare um, the, the answers that we got in the lecture with what we've got here and you should see that they're the same. Alright, so that's the end of that problem. Uh, thanks for listening and I hope you found this useful.